Right then. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to our audience watching online also. I'm Oliver Kahn. I work for the media here at the World Economic Forum. The last press conference of the meeting is by no means the least important. It's the opposite, in fact. It's all about young entrepreneurs breaking the mold, doing something different, creating businesses that not only generate sustainable economic dividends, but also social impact. The World Economic Forum embarked on a challenge several weeks ago, which will not end at this meeting, to identify and to champion women entrepreneurs in Africa. The criteria are quite simple. Has to be a, has to be a business up and running for at least a year, generating revenue, We're under three years old, demonstrating proven innovation that makes it unique, and has to deliver social impact. We were staggered by the response that we got. It was the, one of the toughest processes we've had to sit through. We spent a weekend deliberating over who we should shortlist and then finally who we should invite as the five, five challenge winners for this year's meeting. I'm delighted that three were able to join us today and we're going to hear their stories. So first we have Nelly Nkosi from IMED Tech Group based in Bloemfontein, South Africa. Larissa Uwazi from Kigali, Carl Group is a, an, an, an agronomy company specializing, I believe, in sweet potatoes. Audrey Cheng from Moringa School, Moringa Accelerator, based out of Nairobi in Kenya. I'm going to ask each of them to tell their stories briefly, and then there'll be time for some questions. Neely, please, let's start with you. Uh, I've been introduced as Neely Nkhodise, so I wouldn't say my name again. Uh, I'm originally from Bluefontein in South Africa. Um, my business, I'm at Tech, we do medical prosthesis, specifically segmented on f external facial prosthesis and also the breast prosthesis. Um, the reason behind starting the company was that we had seen the need for the demand of prosthesis, prosthetics by cancer, survi cancer survivors who have lost precious body parts due to cancer tumors and we wanted to create um, some things that can cover up the past that they have lost using 3D printing and also the purpose was to create something that can answer the call to the fourth industrial revolution where we say we want digital technology and 3D printing to be the front runners in how we address problems in Africa, especially within the healthcare sector. Thank you. Larissa, tell us about Calgary. What was your inspiration to set the business up and what does it do? Uh, I'm Oese Larissa. Uh, I'm uh, from Kigali, Rwanda, and I'm currently a student of University of Rwanda. Uh, after seeing that malnutrition uh, is uh, a crucial problem in Africa, I, I came up with an idea of uh, transforming orange flesh sweet potatoes into different products like donuts, cakes, bread, spaghetti. Spaghetti was my vision. Uh, as we know, many children in Africa are suffering from malnutrition diseases. And uh, my project was to help those children and pregnant women uh, to benefit from the vitamin A from orange flesh sweet potatoes and uh, uh, benefit from them and have a healthy life. Uh, I started from University of Rwanda. It was a crazy idea. Everyone that I was approaching was laughing and saying, how can you make spaghetti from sweet potatoes? Uh, but uh, with the help of University of Rwanda, I, co I, I went to the laboratory and we did spaghetti. Now, do you not on the market in Kigali, but we are producing the donuts that are affordable to all population so that they can benefit from vitamin A. Thank you. Audrey, let's tell us a story about Moringa. Sure. Um, so thank you to World Economic Forum for inviting us to this event. Um, my name is Audrey. Uh, I co-founded um, Moringa School based in Nairobi, Kenya. So Moringa School, we're tackling the uh, the lack of technical skills across Africa. We were founded um, when I was working for Savannah Fund, which is a venture capital firm investing in early stage tech startups across the continent. And the biggest problem that any of our startups were facing was their lack of technical talent. Um, they were all outsourcing to India, and when I realized that this was a huge need, right, ICT skills are a really huge need, we decided that we're gonna tackle this problem. So we have uh, Moringa School and Moringa Dev Shop. Moringa School is our four month 
uh, accelerated program. We train in web mobile technologies, user experience, and professional development. And through this program, uh, all of our students have gotten jobs as full-time software engineers. Um, and we also offer Moringa Dev Shop to further upskill our graduates. And Moringa Dev Shop, we do work for clients around the world um, so that you know, we can prove that there is talent in, in Kenya and across Africa and, um, and, that, and that people should invest uh, in this continent. So we're, we're really focused on computer science now and in the future on disrupting higher education here in Africa. Thanks, Audrey. Happy to take any questions. Sir, in the front row. Just wait for the microphone, please. Oh, uh, I am Andre Gakwaya uh, from Rwanda News Agency. And uh, uh, my first question, I see that it is a, um, for all, it is a, uh, you, have a, you have a product, uh, innovative product, uh, which are very interesting. So you, you have to, 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 to disseminate, to produce more, to, you need finance, you need the fund to, to, to grow your business and to, to create a transformation industry and to disseminate your product. How can you get your capital finance to, to grow your business and to, to authorize people to benefit from your research? Um, uh, partic yes, it is a general question, particularly uh, Oase, who is based in Rwanda. Uh, have you get support? Uh, have you been awarded? Uh, Rwanda is innovative. Uh, uh, Rwanda support uh, support uh, innovative uh, research. Uh, how they have done for you, for example? Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, till now, uh, I have been helped by uh, the Ministry of Youth and ICT uh, through Dot Rwanda competition, business plan competition. But uh, uh, the, it was not a big fund because it was uh, like a small competition. Uh, but it helped me to uh, produce some more donuts but my vision is spaghetti from sweet potato that needs uh, a very big investment. Uh, you say, we were saying about uh, how we I get fund. You know, even this was an opportunity. I have uh, through Top Women Innovators Challenge, I have been able to meet some uh, big person who has read, who has made it in industries. And I have been able to meet with uh, other people in uh, industry here in Rwanda. And I hope those connections will make something in the future. And I also uh, apply on other funds uh, around the world. I'm not sitting. I, I need to, to make a change and to be part of this fourth industrial revolution. And I hope uh, through those funds and application, I will be able to reach there. Thank you. Thanks. That's actually a, a question we should broaden out to, to all of you. You seem to have flourished, possibly against all the odds. We keep hearing about the challenges and the barriers and obstacles to entrepreneurism in this region. What are the biggest challenges you face, Neely? Um, one of the biggest challenges was that, you know, when you're introducing a new technology within a market, the health sector that has always been, you know, you'd always say the traditional sector. Sure. Um, it was a challenge because many of them were not welcoming to the idea. And you know, when people are not welcoming to the idea, they have to ask you quite a lot of questions that can deter you. But then the nicest thing was that I had so much support from the South African government with my project. And you know, the challenges that I got when I was starting in 2013 when it was just a research at my university center university of technology to now when it's a fully fleshed product um, i have just minimized on the challenges and i now realize that the world is welcoming to my product the world is welcoming to my inventions and it's moving um, i always say that 
now more than ever, Africa is moving and Africa is welcoming all these innovations created by young people. And can you pinpoint a single breakthrough moment where you thought this could just work? Um, a single breakthrough moment was actually the previous year I had entered into a competition in South Africa. It was the Social Innovation Awards organized by the South African Breweries Foundation. Um, at that moment, I was still quite doubtful of my project, and I remember the minute when people heard about it, everyone was so amazed across South Africa who was there at that event. It was actually some awards. Everyone was amazed. At that moment, I realized that now more than ever, people need this, and people see value in the product that I'm doing, and I realized that I'm not just a single person. I owe my being to South Africa and to Africa as a whole to developing it. It's a fantastic story. And Audrey, what about you? Uh, for the challenges? The challenges, yeah. And also maybe sure. to talk us through the kind of the moments, the pain points, the, sure. the breakthrough moment where you, you kind of figured Moringa is going to work. Sure. Maybe you thought it was going to work all the time. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so, so we did do a fair amount of market research before we even chose to launch this idea. Um, when I was working for Venture Capital, we uh, I was constantly talking to practically anyone uh, in the market about Moringa School, and I was asking them, is this a viable solution, and like, are people going to want it? And after getting enough responses, I realized, you know, this is something that we need to do. So um, in terms of challenges, I think the educational institutions uh, in Africa are pretty challenging in terms of the way that parents and students look at four-year colleges and universities. Uh, generally, they, they look at these diplomas kind of as like the holy grail of, oh, this is what I need to get um, in order to have a successful life. Um, although the stats are showing that that's not true, um, parents and students are still kind of, you know, culturally in that, in that mindset that they need to get that diploma. So we're really challenging that notion and showing people that getting the skills is more important to um, really transforming their lives versus, you know, just, you know, getting that, that piece of paper at the end of college. Um, so that, that, that's been a big, a big challenge for us, although we are, you know, working toward, like, working past it. So I think, you know, our stats are really showing that when our, our graduates are all getting jobs, you know, students, of course, at the end of the day, they want jobs, you know, they, they want employment, they want to make money. Um, so for us, it, it's a pretty easy sell when it comes to the value of our program. That's great, of course. Yeah. Sir, let's have your question, then I've got one of my own. My name is Nii, uh, you write for the Nair of Africa. Uh, I want to ask you, um, have you been able to measure the impact of your work? Like how many people have you helped with your innovation? Then, uh, I, I was just wondering why it came to your mind that you could actually make spaghetti from potatoes. Just curious. Uh, then Cheng, um, Uwasi and Kulise, you've talked about how the government has helped them. Have you received any help from the government? Mm. Okay, so N Nelly, impact. How do you measure your impact? Um, so far, there's a couple of people that we have helped uh, because um, when we started, it was just a social uh, project to say that um, we are just helping people freely. But um, as time went by, we decided to make a business, uh, for-profit business, and um, we've just helped quite a couple of people, but then we're just trying to strengthen our foundation to make sure that how then do you go to public hospitals because that's our target market main getting more patients and it includes getting relationships with the ministry of health those are the relationships we are still working towards and that's when we can have a bigger impact because now they have welcomed our project we just now need to implement it at the ministry of health and public hospitals yes. And Larissa, could I just ask you to speak slightly closer to the microphone, please, okay. so we can hear you online. Okay. Uh, after uh, doing a, a research dissertation uh, on sweet potatoes and found that uh, many women in Rwanda grow that species of sweet potatoes, but they don't have somewhere to sell it, and they used to see sweet potato as a crop, uh, a poor crop, that is for animal, like food for animals and you know, something like that. I wanted to add value because I have seen the nutrients that are in, the, in them, then I wanted people to benefit from them because I, have, I, I was seeing around Rwanda, some, uh, there is still a rate of malnutrition that is still high and I, 
I benefited from that research by uh, introducing a new product that maybe, you know, like eating a donut of 50 francs is more easier than uh, like uh, buying other food that contain vitamin A. So I, I made some affordable uh, products that can, uh, that children can benefit from. Audrey, I believe the question to you is uh, government support. Sure. Um, so we were, we were pretty lucky with our business model. So um, in month three, we were able to break even. So in terms of government support to uh, financially support us, we haven't you know, raised any money. Um, when it comes to working with government, we are in conversations with them about scale and what that looks like for our program. How do we impact more people with the, our quality of education? Um, and we are you know, talking to the governments in, in Rwanda and, and across Africa to see how we can also bring our, our programs across the continent. Okay. Yeah. Well, one final question to me is something we all talk about here every, every session we're in. This place is not short of good ideas and good people to push through ideas, but a lot of the problems is often scaling. So I'm going to ask each of you how you intend to scale, what your challenges are, what your hopes are for the future, and how you're going to make an even bigger impact in the years ahead. Nelly, just because you're next to me, I'm going to ask you to go first. <laughs> um, to be honest, because we started in the area where I, I, I'm based in, which is Bluefontaine, um, the idea is to go nationally in South Africa. And I know a lot of people have welcomed the idea, but most importantly is to touch base in Africa because this is not just a product for South Africa only. This is a product for Africa. And I was basically looking at doing it here in Rwanda. And it's so brilliant that I'm in Rwanda and my idea was to scale my project right here in Rwanda. That was your idea before you came here? Before we came here, the one thing I always wanted was East Africa is my next stop. Okay. Fascinating, fascinating. Larissa, where are we going to go from sweet potatoes? And by the way, can I buy some? Are they, are they in the shops yet, the, the spaghetti? No, they are not still in shops because uh, I have started with those products that are easier and uh, uh, I can make easily without machine, big machines. Uh, but I, ho I really hope in uh, one year I will be able to, to bring that spaghetti from sweet potatoes. Um, I want to impact Africa uh, as well, because uh, we have seen that uh, in Africa the, there are no many production industries, and um, we we know we export spaghetti from around the world, Italy, China, uh, and other countries, and I want also to be uh, the spaghetti seller in Africa, and maybe reach even the whole world. I think you could sell your sweet spaghetti, potato spaghetti in Europe too. I'm a, I'm a big fan of the vegetable. I look forward to different varieties of it. Audrey, what about yourself? Sure, um, so in terms of uh, scale for Moringa School, um, we, we do want to increase access to our education. So we're looking to move across the continent. Um, what that would look like is us working with uh, one of the larger um, corporate companies first to really understand the skills gap in each country so that when we launch our full-time program, we're directly addressing the market needs. So we don't want to make any assumptions when we move into a new country that it'll be just like Kenya. Um, so our, our plan is to, of course, scale across the continent, but beyond the scale, um, to look at our, our course offerings. So right now we're focused on computer programming, but we want to look at the other skills that are needed in this continent, right? Everything that we've been talking about here at World Economic Forum is about, you know, a skills gap. So we want to really use our uh, education to employment model to fill that skills gap. And we plan on, on taking what works now, that's very effective, and bringing it to new verticals. Is there a great skills gap difference between country to country, are you finding? Yeah, definitely. And, and I think that that was one of the, the great parts of uh, attending this, this forum was, you know, talking to a lot of these industry leaders um, and understanding where their skills gaps are and, and in what parts of the continent. Um, it's really opened my eyes up to what else is possible. You know, it's a huge, huge, huge problem, um, but we're, we're getting prepared to solve it. Uh, it's great yeah. that you've been spending your time wisely talking to as many people as possible, <laughs> taking advantage. Okay, I'm, doing, I'm going to ask you, all three of you again one final question, and, and you feel free to not answer, but I, I hope you will. Have you learned anything? Has anything about this meeting helped you at all? Have you come away with one particular grain of knowledge that you think is going to help you move forward to the next stage? Oh, 
quite a lot. Okay, Neely, you again. Oh, you're, you're keen. <laughs> oh, quite a lot. I mean, I've been sitting down and saying that there is so much I've just learned in just three days, something that could change my life. Um, I have learned on uh, the gaps that are that exist in Africa um, and my role as a young person to add within those gaps. Um, right now, more than ever, we are calling civil society, uh, private company corporates are calling upon young people to be the front row players in us attaining the fourth industrial revolution. We need to play an active role. We need to move away from just policies and start implementation. And that is the most important things that I've learned from this World Economic Forum on Africa. The future is in your hands, collectively. Larissa, have you, have you learned anything or anything to share about your experience here? Okay. I've learned a lot of things. Uh, I was really excited to be part of World Economic Forum. And I, I think this has marked uh, another phase of my life and my business. Uh, I have learned a lot from people. I have learned about the gaps in Africa and opportunities for uh, women and youth in Africa. Uh, and I have seen that we are the change uh, that we want to, to bring. We are the change of Africa. We, we women, we, we don't have to be left behind. I've become confident now once again in doing business in my uh, entrepreneurship skills. I have met a lot of people and I have understood some success stories from people who st started from scratch like me, and it was really inspiring. Uh, I, I, I don't know how to say it, it was really great. Audrey. Awesome. Um, yeah, so I, I think um, we, we already knew that our, our model was working pretty well in Kenya, um, but we got a lot of validation that our model will work well across Africa this week. And I think that's, that's got me really, really pumped about our work. Um, even yesterday, uh, the global director of McKinsey, like, he was speaking on a panel and talking about how um, a really major shift that, you know, that Africans need to make is moving away from the four-year college and university model into short, targeted programs. Um, which is exactly what we're doing. So I got really excited to hear that you know people were really thinking about education um, in a way that's completely disruptive of what the rest of the world is thinking about. So, and uh, and besides that, you know, thinking a lot about um, how important women are. You know, so even within our programs, we really focus on getting more women to become these software engineers so that they can become the leaders in the future. Um, so hopefully, one of our graduates will be here next year, not me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I hope so too. Well, we're certainly proud and delighted you were able to join us. And uh, again, congratulations on being this year's challenge winners. Wish you every success in the future and hope we can stay in touch and be with you on your journey. Thanks very much for joining us and thank you for joining us here in the room and watching live online. This session is now closed. Thank you.